this is Terry, Reiki Master Teacher and Astrologer, here today to talk about the total lunar eclipse, blood moon eclipse in Taurus. Whoo, how are you feeling now? My goodness, we've got it going on. We are in it. We're soaking in that eclipse portal. And if you haven't already watched, I did a new moon Scorpio solar eclipse. I'm really going all out this month. It's a in the nine star key. It's a wood tree month and I am a wood star. So I think I have just a lot more energy to pump these little videos out and definitely check out the Scorpio solar eclipse when the eclipse portal opened and the Sabian symbol for that solar eclipse was very positive and we had some great aspects there and we also just did a recording about solar storms. I'll get into that later, but now we find ourselves on November 8th at this blood moon that is conjunct Uranus in Taurus, big deal. And it's all going down in the constellation of Cetus the whale, who's also the sea monster. And I am going to do these separate bite-sized little Reese's peanut butter cup size astrology readings for each of these transits. Because if I didn't, this would be a six hour long video and you guys would never stick around that long. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe and get the notifications so you know when all these little transits are gonna be uploaded because this, this eclipse has that Difta star in the constellation of the Cetus, the whale, which is really bringing us an unexpected wild card. What is gonna happen now? Oh my gosh, it's almost hard to predict. And it's all coming in on November 8th during our election time. I don't know what will come of this one. I'm gonna just make all these little videos and really try to unpack what is going on for you guys. And before I go any further, as I go into that deep dive astrologically, I want to draw the winner because let's not forget this is the full moon. It, you know, I get so wrapped up in it being an eclipse, but it's also our full moon astrology report. And that is when I pick a winner every full moon to win an astrology chart. And I have more pieces of paper this time than I think ever before because I've just recently gotten 78 new subscribers. And if you've just recently joined, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for subscribing and being here. And every month I give away an astrology chart and I'm just going to pick someone here. I, um, Let's see, I have Princess Chanel. This, oh my gosh, that is so funny. Princess Chanel this time. And I, if you watch the Scorpio report, um, the Sabian symbols, I was talking about how my great grandmother, who this jade is my great grandmother, my great grandmother wore Chanel perfume and now Princess Chanel won. How crazy is that? That's like an incredible synchronicity right now. Um. So if you're watching Princess Chanel, you can find my website, KamimiHealingArts.com, in the description. Just go there, contact me, and email me your birth date, time, and location, and I'll get started on your chart. It comes with an energy clearing and distance Reiki, and it's normally priced at $233. It's free to you. And this is something that I do... When I did like the Venus, Sun, Kazemi, remember Venus was just conjunct the Sun. Venus in the heart of the Sun is the best time to manifest. So many of you were just putting in your requests for what you wanted to manifest. And I want you to know I write them all down. I think I have like 85 <laughs> pieces of paper here. And I write them all down. I put them in my singing bowl. I light up my Palo Santo, I burn the Palo Santo to bless your wishes, and then I ring my singing bowl, and as I'm ringing my singing bowl, I am sending distance Reiki symbols 
to your wishes and prayers. I do this every time. If I say, write a comment and I will rake it. I just wanted to show you, since I'm at home today, this is what I do. I do this every time. And if you have something that you're trying to manifest, this is a potent time because Venus and the sun, they're still traveling together. And I did a whole video about how to manifest in three simple steps using the Venus sun, divine feminine energy magic that we have going on our planet right now as Venus is so empowered as she rises up as evening star. So go back and watch that video. I'll drop it down in the descriptions as well. And if you let me know what you want to manifest, just drop it in the comments. I promise on this blood moon eclipse, we'll probably have a fire pit fire ceremony and I will be ringing your wishes into being. And just for an example, uh, we have like Tajwana who is asking for a five bedroom home for her family to have more space and financial freedom. Amen to that. Who doesn't want a bigger house with a little more space? And of course I got my Powerball ticket <laughs> here too because as I'm recording this, we have an $850 million Powerball at stake. And with this Uranus conjunct the moon on this blood moon Taurus eclipse. This is the kind of transit that will surely bring a jackpot winner. And this is a massive surprise party for good or bad surprising events. They happen and we don't know the outcome if it's going to be good or bad. Some people say winning the lottery is a negative and it causes all kinds of problems, but I'd like to give it a try. I don't know. <laughs> and um, I would put my money on this Powerball jackpot winner to be a Taurus because of course we got this massive blood moon eclipse Uranus conjunction happening in Taurus in a time of rebirth. I could totally see a Taurus winning, but I could also see one of the water signs winning Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces because they are just being blessed by Venus. Venus is in Scorpio. Venus, the manifester of love and money in Scorpio is trying Pisces and Cancer. So that makes us a lucky moon for all the water signs. Yes. And Jupiter just entered Pisces. So as Jupiter is retrograding back to Pisces, giving us another Jupiter trying, Jupiter is the king that you can ask for your wishes to be answered. So all you water signs, you get another chance as Jupiter dips back into Pisces and make sure you make a wish and leave it down below, I'll rake it. And I could also see Sagittarius winning for this eclipse because Sagittarius has some really lucky aspects too. So those are the signs you wanna rub for luck. Taurus, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer, and Sagittarius. Good luck. Go buy a ticket. Everyone else, I don't know. Don't waste your money. But <laughs> we, um, there are certain aspects that make it more likely, you know, to astrologically win a lottery, but we don't have time. That is a whole nother video. And if we had more time, I would love to tell you all about the aromatherapy because I am a massage therapist and I do work with aromatherapy. And I would say for this Taurus blood moon eclipse, you would want patchouli, frankincense, star anise, and Tulsi, holy basil, those are the oils that I'm working with, but I can't go into the deep explanation about why, because we just don't have time for it. And I'm recording this before my working massage. And actually today I have a space energy, space clearing at uh, one of my Reiki students' homes. So I'm kind of, if I sound like I'm talking fast, it's because I've got to get out the door. And it is, this is this eclipse portal. It's a busy time and time is speeding up. I just talked about that in the Taurus conjunct the moon separate transit report. You'll have to check out that one. And I love that Jack Cornfield quote. It's, you know, you think you have time. That's so daunting. And we don't have time with this energy time is just escaping and I haven't been able to keep a handle on my time this week. 
So, um, and if I had more time, I would love to talk all about the crystals that you should be really putting on your altar for this eclipse. I will just say it's emerald because emerald is the stone for Taurus. And it's also red carnelian and red fire agate and mahogany obsidian and rose quartz and topaz for Scorpio that is on the other end of this axis. But we don't have time to delve into the crystals either because we got Uranus who's just trying to wake us up and shake us up and Boy, this eclipse could bring some heavy-duty storms, and we are having some of the biggest solar storms ever recorded. We've been having the X1 <laughs> solar storms. I don't know if you guys are tapped into the solar storms that are happening, but you can go to NASA. NASA is, of course, studying these solar storms with great concern because they are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's a kind of a scary little rabbit hole when you go down these solar storms. We just recorded two videos about the solar storms and how they can have all these health effects. You can have headaches, migraine, insomnia, dehydration, excessive thirst, ears ringing, vertigo, dizziness. I have so many clients coming in just feeling dizzy and out of it and spacey. And that's all because the sun is just blasting us with these ultraviolet rays that are just beyond recording. They're actually breaking some of the technology that NASA uses to record them because they're so strong. And we've never seen solar flares this large before. And there's some scary talk about 2025 and how we might start having solar hurricanes where the sun is blasting us with basically a hurricane of ultraviolet light. And I don't even know what that's gonna look like, but the solar storms are enough to be zapping our energetic systems and they can even cause heart palpitations, heart attack, and stroke, which doctors are saying we're seeing more of in our world right now. Let me know if you know anyone who's had a heart attack, heart palpitations, or stroke because it's on the rise right now. And so we did a whole video about the health concerns of solar storms. You'll have to go check it out. I'll put the link down below. And we also did some Reiki infused healing music just to support you during the solar storms that are just gonna become a part of our life now. They're not going away. They're only getting stronger as we move forward. And we just might see a huge solar storm with this blood moon eclipse. I mean, we're already soaking in it. We're already seeing solar storms, but we can also have earthquakes and lightning storms. And I've been really enjoying this Reiki healing, sound healing music. We work with Epidemic Sound and these guys from Scandinavia, Swedish Sound Therapy, they are amazing musicians putting out these binaural beats that just really help you to relax even amongst the solar storms. <laughs> and I created a whole playlist. I'll drop the playlist down below. And I had been so booked out with massage, my gosh, and energy clearings and distance Reiki that I think the world needs healing now. And I just put this on at the beginning of my massage day and I just let the playlist play for my whole day. And my clients are loving this music. And I'll probably use it in my Reiki class. I'm teaching Reiki this Saturday, October 29th. If you're watching this and you want to come and get a Reiki attunement, I have one spot, just one little spot left for Saturday, October 29th. But I typically teach Reiki one at least once a month. So, um, you can get a Reiki attunement and that will really start you on a course of healing and then you can heal her, heal thyself. I love Reiki the best of any modality I've studied in massage because I can heal myself. I can do the self Reiki and refill my empath well so that I can give and be a caregiver for others. But 
Anyways, getting back to that Uranus conjunct the moon that is really prevalent for this blood moon eclipse. And there's a lot with this eclipse portal that's wanting us to just wake up and it's shaking us out of our complacency and saying, pay attention because there is something higher coming in now. And we might have this trajectory where we leap forward into our destiny and we find our life path and our life purpose, especially if you are a Taurus or a Scorpio or you have any fixed signs. I mean, there's some signs that are really going to be feeling this eclipse, this blood moon eclipse the most and Taurus and Taurus node, you're first in line and you can get your eclipse chart reading. I'm having a sale just through November 1st. So you have just a couple more days to sign on because I, I need time to do them before November 8th. And it's just $88. I'll tell you where this eclipse is hitting you. But we're all going to be feeling that death transformation rebirth cycle. We've been in it. We've been soaking in it all year. And now it's like the climax of the movie. What's going to happen? Oh my gosh. And there's a breakdown to breakthrough energy. You might have some incredible flashes of insight. And our whole collective is being reborn into this new beginning as we prepare for the new dawn in this age of Aquarius that they've been talking about for since I was in diapers with that song. <laughs> and it's time to get moving forward into the new, into the golden era. We're getting to the good part of the movie, I promise. And we've also had that Saturn Uranus square. If you guys have been watching for a while, you know I've been talking about that Saturn Uranus diamond making square for the last two years. And now Saturn once again is there squaring Uranus, which means Saturn is squaring this whole blood moon eclipse. And Saturn and Uranus have been just sort of in the boxing ring. They're two really different people. Uranus likes freedom, rebellion, a new order. It's kind of like we've been watching Star Wars and it's like the rebellion and the rebels, the Jedi rebels. And then Saturn is the old paradigm, the rules, law, order, restriction. And Saturn is going to teach you lessons for your soul. Saturn's coming in strong now. And Saturn reminds me so much of my friend Ganesh here. Ganesh is the overcomer of obstacles. You can pray to Ganesh to have your obstacles removed. But the truth is Ganesh is the one who put them there. And Ganesh put those obstacles in your way to teach you valuable lessons. And if you think about your life so many times when you've had obstacles or conflict or issues with another person, that's when your soul is really growing. So Saturn, just like Ganesh, is going to be putting some obstacles in front of us now. And we might have some hardships that come of this eclipse, but those hardships are there to have you dig deeper, to get those deep soul lessons that are going to transform your life. And sometimes you look back and think the worst thing that ever happened to you became the best thing. I get reminds me of when um, I had a horrible landlord, just really, oh, the worst landlord of my life. But you know what he did for me? He convinced me to buy my first house because I never wanted to have a landlord like that again. And so in a way, I now thank him. It was a horrible obstacle at the time. I hated that situation, but that situation brought me to become a homeowner and being a homeowner has been the best financial decision of my life. So it's that kind of lessons that Saturn's going to be pulling out of you this blood moon eclipse, especially if you are a Taurus or Aquarius, you guys are really feeling because Saturn is in Aquarius. So Taurus and Saturn is really feeling the diamond making pressure now. And we will all be feeling some huge shifts in all things Taurus. Taurus is that earth sign ruled by Venus. 
and Taurus rules over our food supply, which we are definitely seeing issues with our food supply and inflation and access to food. And Taurus rules over our patience. So trying to be more patient as we go through this incredible transition that's gonna be a little rocky, not, not gonna lie. And Venus just coming in so strong, the ruler of Taurus, but Venus is now opposite Taurus in Scorpio with that whole Sun Venus Kazemi. We are going to be feeling that for weeks to months too. So make sure you go back and watch that Sun Venus Kazemi and learn more about that energy and how to manifest when you align with these transits, you really can receive. Even though it's gonna be hard times, you can align with the good that's showing up like the Venus Sun Kazemi and receive all that you desire as a gift from Venus. And Venus is showing up in Scorpio in the second house of wealth, this eclipse, opposite Taurus, who's showing up in the eighth house of death, sex in Texas, that's the natural home of Scorpio, so it's kind of like they're flipped right now. And the second house is normally Taurus's home, but they're they're kind of opposite. And this eclipse is really going to create some financial changes that are gonna ripple out into our world. We will be seeing the effects of what happens during this eclipse for years to come. It's not like it's just gonna affect November 8th. And we have the United States is in that Pluto return. Pluto has returned to the place that it was in 1776 when America was established. And that's in this, Pluto was in the second house of wealth. And so America's whole financial system is being transformed. Remember, Pluto is the great transformer and Pluto rules over wealth, but Pluto's also the undertaker. So Pluto is, there's going to be some things that, some old ways of handling money that are going to die off as we're bringing in this new way of money where it's all going to change before our eyes. And I think it's going to be harder the older you are. I'm in my 50s, so it's like, oh, I don't want the money to change. But the young ones are coming in with a whole new divine abundance that they're transforming this world too. The, the teenagers and the millennials, they have that galactic center that is ready for the change. So I think the younger ones will handle the financial transformation, the Pluto transformation, much easier than some of us older ones who don't like to see an overhaul of the financial system. And just so many people have their mind on their money right now. So um, that's money's really going to be coming up in this Taurus blood moon eclipse. Taurus and Scorpio, they love money. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio, I know. And just pay attention to where in your chart this eclipse is happening. If I've read your chart before, drop a comment down below and I'll tell you which house this eclipse is in because I could just pull your chart up real easy. You're in my astrology system. And I've just been doing so many of these eclipse chart readings and it's totally fascinating. And this eclipse for me is in exact opposition to my stellium of, exact opposition to my stellium of planets in Scorpio. I mean, my sun is at 16 degrees and that's exactly where Uranus and Taurus is stationed. And then the moon, of course, is conjuncting and the moon and Uranus will join up at 16 degrees. I'm going to be feeling this one and if this eclipse falls on your birthday or within five days before or five days after you will definitely be feeling it uh guilty my birthday is the day before this eclipse so all i want for my birthday is to just get through this eclipse portal and also if you all will like comment and subscribe that would be the best birthday present ever because i'm really trying to grow my little channel here and i just want to grow up no i really don't want to grow up but i do want to grow my channel and my husband bill who is my videography angel he has his rising and north node in scorpio really close to the degree as well so 
there's going to be some unexpected event for us, I'm sure, some surprise, and I'll catch you next time. I'll let you know what happened. And you may experience a massive change, a transformation, wherever you have Scorpio and Taurus, whatever house it is. If it's in your 10th house of career, your career might change. If it's in your fourth house of home, you might be moving. Something will show up for you wherever Taurus and Scorpio are. And if you're a fixed sign, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, you will be feeling it. Oh my gosh, you're going to feel it, fixed signs. Wherever you have 15 to 16 degrees in any planet, in any house, you will be feeling it there. If you're a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, like I said, we've got a beautiful Jupiter trine and Venus trine, and you will just have that lucky kiss this eclipse. Your unexpected surprise will probably be good. I hope my unexpected surprise will probably be good. And if you're an earth sign, if you are a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, you are definitely feeling this eclipse. So let me know what you are. I'd love to know how you're feeling it. And I'll probably do a blood moon eclipse little mini readings for each sign for this one like I did for the last one. I know you guys like that one. And hopefully this will be a positive surprising event and a positive change. And the quantum leap will be pushing you on your trajectory to your destiny, to your fate, because that's what eclipses are all about. They align us to our fate and our destiny. And if you can possibly, I'm laughing because I'm not doing this, but if you can keep your schedule lighter this month to make room for any change or transitions that want to occur and fall, fall is always my most busy season. I don't know what it is. There's something about fall going into winter that makes people feel like they want to heal themselves as we go into that Scorpio shadow season. Or maybe it's because I'm a Scorpio, but I've been so <laughs> busy. But I'm definitely going to take my birthday off so I will have some time to absorb this eclipse and just be open and receiving and listening. So no matter what your schedule is, if you're busy or not, something just might show up for you and just demand your immediate attention. That's what Uranus conjunct the moon is. It's like, nope, you thought you were going over there, you're going over there. It's just a sudden, like unexpected storm that makes you have to respond like you do when the lights go out and you've got to go rush and get the candles. So just be flexible and be prepared. Get your flashlight and your candles ready. Be like a leaf on the wind and go wherever spirit calls you this month. And it ties in so much with that nine star key astrology. If any of you guys are into the nine star key astrology, it's an Eastern nature based astrology. And I just did the report for that where we are a fast growing tree and Uranus conjunct the moon is a fast growing energy and the tree wants to branch out in all these different directions, but you also have to follow the sun, right? You can't just grow a branch over there if the sun's going that way. So you have to pay attention. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the Nine Star Key Astrology Report for October. And I keep saying this over and over, but pay attention to the little signs and symbols that are showing up in your earth. It could just be seeing a hummingbird. We have a beautiful hummingbird feeder and just seeing that hummingbird just lights up my heart. It feels like Lakshmi is blessing our family because we're in the time in the Hindu culture of Diwali right now. And you can pray to Lakshmi and Lakshmi is like a little hummingbird. She loves sweetness. So as long as you keep sweet words on your lips and speak of love and good 
things. Be positive. Then Lakshmi will bless your house with financial abundance. So when I see a hummingbird, I'm like, oh, Lakshmi's visiting. Oh my gosh. So just pay attention to those little things. What's showing up for you? What kind of little animals or anything is showing up for you? And as we're in this eclipse portal, which really goes all the way this whole moon cycle. So it's not just November 8th, but it's two weeks after. So mark your calendar. I don't know. I'm not looking at a calendar, but two weeks after November 8th, this whole time, I would not make any life altering decisions. Don't quit your job and don't move during an eclipse. Hold off on beginning any new ventures now. Don't sign a contract around this time if you can avoid it. Bide your time and just act a few weeks, like two weeks after this eclipse. And this eclipse time is more of a time for just listening. Just getting in the quiet and listening to the divine messages from spirit and get into that receiving mode. This is a receiving time. You don't want to be out there trying to do. This is not a being doing time. This is a receiving time, receiving mode. So you may even be feeling more emotional during this blood moon eclipse as things are coming up that have you triggered and that's really normal. So that's why you want to give yourself that time and space to listen, listen to your inner self, do some journaling, do some automatic writing like I was talking about in the last astrology report and just lighten your load if you can. Do not over schedule yourself. I wouldn't even travel right now and your judgment might be a little impaired and information might be missing as that moon is veiled by the shadow of the earth. It's like you don't have the whole story right now and we probably won't have the whole story around this eclipse for a couple weeks. I won't be surprised if we have some issues about the voter fraud or something because <laughs> this aspect, it's going to be veiled. We won't know the whole story for two to three weeks after. And this global eclipse is occurring. If you look at the photo, I'm going to put a photo in here. Right in the seas that, you know, are between us is where the eclipse exact point is. So this is a global eclipse that is really affecting us. And it's an emphasis on our global connection, the sea that connects us. And we are so globally connected now with all the technology. And we really are a global collective consciousness, a global community through technology and through Zoom. I'm, I've been doing so many distance energy healings and distance Reiki sessions for people in other countries. It's really fun. And I love this new global community. I'm doing a space clearing soon for an 1111 birthday girl in the Netherlands. I cannot wait. It's like I'm getting to travel through my Zoom world. And um, we're going to just see more of this. This is the Uranus. Uranus loves technology. Uranus loves this kind of global travel through computers. And we are going to be moving into the meta universe, whatever that looks like. Get your Oculus helmet on. <laughs> My son is younger, so it's more the young generation that's really going to be seeing this whole otherworldly meta-universe with the Oculus. And get ready, friends. The strange new world we've dreamed about is here.